So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the one feature on your camera that you're probably not using that can literally ruin your footage. Let's go ahead and talk about it. So firstly, we're gonna be talking about what is this setting slash feature and basically why you should use it. And then we're gonna be hopping over there on my Sony a7 IV. I'm gonna be showing you guys this feature in a little bit of detail with a little bit of tips and tricks. So what is this feature? This feature is going to be white balance. Now, a lot of people don't necessarily know what white balance is. And if you don't know what white balance is, I'm gonna be teaching you guys what white balance is in today's video. Now, white balance works off of a Kelvin number. Now, if you're looking at 2700 Kelvin all the way up to 5600 Kelvin, your 2700 Kelvin is gonna be that warmer light like what you see back here in the background and your 5600 Kelvin is gonna be what you're actually seeing me being lit from. So as you can see that we have a warmer light in the background and a brighter, more lighter, kind of cooler light in the foreground, which is lighting me for my key light. Now when shooting video, this can actually differ from shot to shot. And whenever we jump into those tips, I'm gonna be showing you how to actually keep it from actually being different from shot to shot. So you guys are probably wondering why is this actually important to actually shoot video and how does this actually mess up your footage? Now you do have two different types of white balance. Now in white balance, you want your white balance to actually be set and not change. Now in this case scenario, my white balance is set at a certain Kelvin number and it's not changing because I actually have a little bit of control over the lights here in this scenario. So we basically don't need the auto white balance to be on and that's what a lot of people do and they don't know that that's actually messing up their footage. Now what is the difference between auto and manual white balance? So like I said, if you were running a auto white balance on your camera, every time something white gets into the frame and the lighting is actually hitting it a little bit different, the camera is gonna change the Kelvin number in the background, even if you're recording like I am right here. Now, when it does that, it actually makes it a little bit harder for you later on in post to actually color your footage. Now, if you have in that auto white balance go from 23, well, 2700, 3700, 4500, 5600, all in one clip, then you're gonna have a lot of different color variations going on in your footage. And this is what actually messes up a lot of people's footage and it doesn't look coherent from shot to shot. Now, if you was to actually change that white balance to a manual white balance, you would actually have to use a I mean, you can use a color meter. And basically while I say that is because usually you wanna set your white balance after all of your lights are set up in your scene. And then you use the color meter to basically get what the camera is looking on or looking at and actually white balance the camera. So in this case scenario, before I started this video, I did go ahead and set my camera to 5600 Kelvin. And that's because my key lights are 5600 Kelvin. And then I went ahead and put a practical light in the background, which was a little bit different from what I set in the camera to make the light perceive different in the background. As you can see, cooler light on me and warmer light in the background. So we're looking at 5600 coming from the camera and this is what the camera is perceiving because this is the majority of the lights we have in the room. And then we have that small 2700 Kelvin in the background, which is actually making a practical light. So for example, guys, I used to use this Apple Magic trackpad to put up in front of the camera to actually get white balance off of this trackpad. Now you don't necessarily have to use a trackpad. You can use anything white or anything that is supposed to be perceived white. Now it might not be pure white. So make sure if you do find something that is white, that is as close to pure white as you can actually get. And then you can use that as your white balance card. Now you can actually go out and actually buy a real white balance card and use this bad baby as well. Now, another tip that you can actually do is hold this bad baby up, either it be in white or gray, 
we're going to be talking about the gray side in another video leave comments down below if you want to see that but you can hold this bad baby up in the frame in front of your face off to the side of your face up to the top of your face and actually use this as a reference frame in your editor and you can actually click on this bad baby to set the white balance to basically tell the program that this baby is white and then at that point the program will change the color temperature of your footage but you want to go ahead and shoot it directly and correctly right out of the camera so you might as well just white balance first and then start shooting your video Now let's jump into a little bit of some of those tips and tricks that I'm gonna be showing you guys how to actually use auto white balance and actually kind of lock it off and make sure it doesn't change when you're getting ready to shoot. So tip number one is gonna be actually using white balance only when you're in a pinch. Now, if you don't necessarily know what the Kelvin temperature is or if you had to get to a shoot and you was a little late and you couldn't necessarily do all your prerequisites, which would be, of course, white balance in your camera, make sure the camera is actually perceiving the color and the whites and the blacks correctly, then you can just go ahead and use auto white balance. When I'm using my Sony a7 IV, and it actually has a setting in there where you can actually lock the white balance. So what I'd usually do is I find something white I put up in front of the camera and I let it actually turn that actual picture or white object into a pure white color balance. And when it gets to that pure white color balance, I usually just hit white balance lock. Once the white balance is locked, it shouldn't change from actually what it's seen. And remember, I did say that you got to have all your lights set up and everything set up first before you do your white balance or every light you introduce, if it's at a different color temperature, is actually going to mess up your Kelvin color temperature. So make sure that you got your lights set up first and then you can use this little tip and trick of using auto white balance putting some right in front of the camera and actually pressing white balance lock whenever it changed that color temperature up and that actual object is perceived pure white. Now another way that I would say, and we've talked about it already, and that's gonna be that manual way. Now send it in manual is just gonna allow it to basically not, you don't have to worry about it. At that point, you don't necessarily need to worry about it. Now you can use, you know, things like a color meter, like I said earlier in the video to basically kind of let it give you a color Kelvin number and you just set in the camera and then you off to the races. Now the reason I don't really like doing that is because if you have a lot of scenes or you have a lot of things going on and the camera is constantly moving from here to here to here, you're actually going to want to set that white balance every time the camera has moved and the scene has changed. So this is one of the biggest things guys, I'm telling you, white balance will literally kill your footage. It has done it to me and it just made, you know, it made the editing process a little bit longer, maybe 30, 40 minutes longer than it needed to be because I actually had to go through the footage and as soon as the color balance changed, I had to change my adjustment layer on my color or everything was going to look way more sloppier than it was when it actually changed from this Kelvin number to this Kelvin number during my recording. So make sure you guys are actually using white balance correctly because this can ruin your footage, make things green and purple and orange and blue and it doesn't necessarily need to be because it's actually reading the scene the wrong way and it's actually catching different types of light and it doesn't know what it needs to be set on. So make sure you guys are setting your white balance, are setting it close and only use auto white balance when you're in a pinch and hopefully this will save you from actually throwing away some footage or ruining some of the footage that you have shot. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Hope you are enjoying the video so far. I've been enjoying making videos. You guys have been blowing them up. We just hit 4.7K here, so next goal is, of course, 5K. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. And if you like the video so far or have made it this far, make sure you guys hit that like button. I'll see you guys on the next one.